Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we're taking a look at another of the giant Pleistocene mammals, the Megatherium. The Megatherium was a giant sloth related to today's two and three toed sloths. But whereas the modern sloths spend most of their time up in the trees, the Megatherium was too big to climb trees. It was about the size of an elephant, measuring around 6 meters, that's 20 foot in length, and weighing up to 4 tons. It was the largest known ground sloth, and during the time that it lived, only the woolly mammoths would have been bigger. The Megatherium was first discovered by Manuel Torres on the bank of the river Luján in Argentina in 1788. This was a nearly complete skeleton. It was shipped to the National Museum of Natural Sciences in Madrid, where it can still be found today. It was reassembled by museum employee Juan Bautista Bru, who also drew the skeleton and some individual bones. It was based on these drawings that French anatomist Georges Cuvier, who I've mentioned in previous videos, notably the episode on the Megaloceros, he was able to determine the nature of this great beast. He named it Megatherium Americanum and published a scientific description of it in 1796. Megatherium skeleton is extremely robust in its construction, and it seems to be built not just to support its large body, but to provide the maximum amount of stability. The lower bones of the short hind legs are comparable to the femur in thickness and development. Combined with a short but thick tail and a broad pelvis, the lower body effectively becomes a seat for which the upper body can rest on. The price of this lower body development is that Megatherium certainly would not have broken any records of speed, and may have been one of the slowest animals in its ecosystem. However, this would not be a problem, as Megatherium probably would not have had to run to or from anything. The debate of locomotion and habitat has come up frequently. Megatherium has large claws which look like they might be great for digging. This led to some paleontologists believing that an the animal lived underground, burrowing like a giant mole. But this idea seemed too ridiculous. Imagine a large population of these creatures and think how much a network of huge tunnels big enough for a megatherium would undermine the local geography. Whereas modern sloths lived in trees, it was hard to imagine an animal the size of a megatherium being able to climb trees. The only viable hypothesis was that the megatherium was a terrestrial animal which used its large claws to tear off branches or even uproot trees, perhaps sitting back on its tail to munch on the leaves and tree limbs. The English anatomist Richard Owen proposed that megatherium could stand up on its hind limbs and did not have to stay in a quadrupedal stance. The image of the megatherium standing on its hind legs and reaching up into the trees and pulling on the branches with its huge claws is a common picture seen in books and museum reconstructions. But trackways found in South America hint that it may have walked bipedally too, and one attempt to test its ability to walk on two legs found nothing preventing it from doing so. Another debate has been about the diet of the megatherium, and a number of theories have been put forward. Megatherium would have eaten plants like other giant ground sloths, and would have used its large size to reach up into the trees to pick out vegetation that was beyond the scope of smaller herbivores. This meant the competition for food between giant ground sloths like Megatherium and other herbivores was comparatively low. And this is one of the reasons why the giant ground sloths were able to spread upwards into North America when it became connected to South America during the Pliocene. The strong teeth and robust jaw suggest that Megatherium was quite capable of chewing tough vegetation, and this adaption further suggests that Megatherium was capable of adapting to different plant types. But some scientists thought that Megatherium may have also eaten meat, possibly by scavenging or chasing away other predators from their kill. Some have even suggested it may have hunted animals like the Dedicurus, flipping them over and attacking their soft underbelly with their huge claws. Normally, it's possible to deduce the feeding habits of fossil animals on the basis of the shape and the wear of their teeth. However, the teeth of the giant sloth are not comparable to those of modern animals, and so aren't as much help as teeth usually are. So one team of scientists recently performed a study on fossilised bones, looking at the composition of carbon isotopes, the ratio of protein and mural content of the bone. In carnivores, the proportion of proteins is significantly higher than in herbivores, which primarily eat food high in carbohydrates. These differences can be documented in the isotopes. 
The result of this study showed that Megatherium lived exclusively on plant material. Well that's all I have for you this week and as always I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope to see you next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.